Tonight, the pressure is on in Paris. There may be trouble ahead But while there's music and moonlight And love and Let's face the music and dance Before the fiddlers have fled Before they ask us to pay the bill And while we still have the chance Let's face the music and dance. and the glamour of international figure skating. In between the forklifts and the hockey nets, these Americans in Paris, Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman, need a medal, preferably gold. The French champions, Sarah Abitbal and Stéphane Bernadis are eager to show their stuff to the home crowd. And before you try this on the ice, you do this off the ice, over and over again. Twist, bring it back, bring it back to neutral, and dismount. I'm Andrea Joyce. Tonight, the best couples in skating are at Trophée Lalique here on Lifetime. An ice dance season is like a mystery in which the murder has not yet been committed, but everyone knows who's going to do it. Last season, the Russians did it. Five, nine, six, oh. Won the world championship, that is, which in some minds was just like getting away with murder. We think that Marina and Gwendol were just fantastic at world championships and that they didn't win, it was... Everybody could understand and saw this, ex except judges. This year, the Russians were expected to do it again when suddenly they disappeared. Their second best team lost Skate America to, of all nations, that powerhouse in ice dancing, Italy. Has turned a page of and promptly withdrew from its next competition, claiming an injury. The, mini skirts. the best team, the world champions Krilova and Ovsianikov, withdrew from all their Grand Prix competitions. Why? She said her back was severely injured. Rumors said they were afraid of the French. In any case, the Grand Prix of skating has come to Paris, and everyone who is supposed to be here is. The Italians who won Skate America are back. It's hard to win the Grand Prix, it's hard to, to beat the Russians, so it was amazing for us. I mean, we are skating since five years trying to do that. The United States national champions Naomi Lang and Peter Chernyshev are here. This is like almost worlds because <laughs> we have so many high competitors, so to get the nerves out of the way and all that before Worlds is really great. Most important, the top French team, the world silver medalist Gwendal Pezera and Marina Anasina are here to debut their new season of programs designed by the great British ice dancers Jane Torval and Christopher Dean. Mentally, psychologically, ready to go? Yeah, yeah, we're impassioned to, uh, to show our new program, so we are, of course, ready for that. 
The gold medal is decided by three separate competitions. Marina and Gwendal won the compulsory dance and this original dance, though not as easily as expected. Three of the nine judges thought the Italians were better in the original dance, which will send this team back to the drawing board. Still entering the free dance, the major part of this competition, they are in first place. The Italian team of Barbara Fusarpoli and Maurizio Margaglio is second. The Lithuanians, who won Skate Canada, are third. And the Polish team is hoping to hold on to fourth place against the Americans. The free dance is worth 50% of the final score. And the first couple on the ice by draw is the five-time Polish champions Sylvia Novak and Sebastian Koloszynski. They are skating to the music of Chopin. And my partner is two-time United States ice dance champion Susie Wynn. to make it easier to judge the event. There are between five and seven lifts. Two lifts are specific. Dance spins, synchronized twizzles, and two step sequences. This is their, one of their lifts. It has to change curves. Difficult lift there. He and a spread eagle, a nice balance point between them. Sylvia and Sebastian have been together since 1991. They finished ninth in the world last March, their highest finish ever, and one place ahead of the Americans they are competing against tonight. very nice but perhaps a little bit on the simple side the other teams competing in this event really have some sophisticated and difficult choreography see here they're separated it's okay because it's the step sequence but it's a little bit far apart they need to close that in to make it more difficult and the unison clearer Now they're in the lead ahead of Lang and Chernichev, the American team, who skated beautifully in the compulsories and in the original dance. Sylvia Nova. 
Novak and Sebastian Kolashinsky, fourth place, entering the free dance. This is their first Grand Prix event of the season. They're trying to stay ahead of the Americans, Naomi Lang and Peter Chernyshev, who will skate last tonight. And one of their seven dance lifts here, one of the more difficult lifts here, a great balance point. He breaks into a spread eagle position. That's very hard to do. Very few people could do the spread eagle. You can either do it or you can't. He does it very well. And that was one of their more difficult lifts. Getting ready backstage for the debut of their new free dance, Marina Anasina and Gwendal Pesara. Two sets of marks in ice dancing. The first is for technical merit on a 6.0 scale, and they range from 5-2 to a high of 5-4 from the Canadian and the U.S. judges. Well, I think the 5.4 is a little bit generous. The second mark is for presentation, and these go up a range of 5.3 to 5.5 for the Polish national champions Novak and Kolashinski. High drama getting ready in the wings here at Trophée Lalique. The ISU Grand Prix of Figure Skating is brought to you by OnHealth.com, a new way to look at everything on health, and by Amazon.com. Find gifts from toys to electronics at Earth's biggest selection. They are not lovers, but people are talking about them. Barbara Fusar Poli and Maurizio Margaglio. In the slow-moving world of dance rankings, their rise is the surprise of the season. Fifth in the world last March, they beat the number four ranked team at Skate America and have their sights set on number three, Shaylin Bourne and Victor Kratz next week in Russia. We never have big champions in our country. So we are always against these, these giants, Russia, United States, France. I mean, I don't know if the nation means something for, for the people around us. We think that we can make big the Italy, so we're trying to do that. We try, yeah. <laughs> On the ice, representing Italy, Barbara Fusarpoli, Maurizio Margaglio. They took one judge from the French team in the compulsory dance, three in the original dance, and now they prepare to go back to back with the world's silver medalists in the free dance. Barbara Fusarpoli and Maurizio Margaglio. The music is Lord of the Dance and Braveheart. is very aggressive. They attack everything and approach everything with full passion. Their rotational lift has to turn at least three revolutions, they turn it five. With this music being Celtic, it's important that the footwork is nice and tight to really represent the true sense of Celtic dancing. change of direction lift.
That makes it so hard. That takes months to really master the balance. Everything in ice dancing is so subtle. But a lot of the difficulty really isn't recognized. It isn't like a throw triple this or a throw triple that. Check out this footwork. They're nice and close. Great unison. It was very strong, well choreographed, and they really believe in it. You could see it in their faces. Six-time champions of Italy, fifth in the world the last two years. It is possible that they could win a medal at the World Championships next March. They're very secure and very strong. They have great partnering skills. Here in one of their dance lifts, the rotational lift, it has to turn three times, nice and tight. It's hard to come out of those rotational lifts because there's so much momentum building and you're so close. You really need to have great control. And here, another one of their creative movements here. It goes into a low line balancing. It's hard to do again because you really get pulled down. She's in a beautiful, what we call a stag position. Both of her legs are in a stag style. Very nice. Oh, well. so the first set of marks again for technical merit and as Susie Wynn mentioned, ice dance rules have become quite specific, largely rewritten in the last two years with the intention of making the sport less subjective in its judging and these marks are fairly consistent. Five sixes and five sevens. The second set is for presentation. These are higher, 156, 159 from the British judge. And the Italians are currently in first place. At the World Championships last March, many people thought this team should have been in first place. Marina Anasina and Gwendal Pesera finished second, one vote behind the Russians. But to them, this standing ovation in Helsinki was the truest vote of all. Last year in Helsinki, the public said, you are world champion. And this is something that goes straight to your heart, and you felt that. You know, if you've got the judges and not the public, you, you didn't win. Here now, the first competitive performance of the new free dance by Marina Anasina and Gwendal Pesera. The music, Carl Orff's haunting Carmina Burana. The program choreographed by Torval and Dean.
very difficult footwork for both Wendell and Marina. first time that I've seen this program in its entirety and there's so much to watch it's a very interesting program very well choreographed the potential within it is what's exciting I only see this being brilliant by the end of the season the marks for Anna Sina and Pesara when we return Next week, the ISU Grand Prix of Figure Skating moves to St. Petersburg for the Cup of Russia. Short programs Monday night on ESPN pairs in a much-anticipated duel in the dance Friday night here on Lifetime and the men and ladies free skates Sunday afternoon at 2 on ABC Sports. Marina Anasina and Gwendal Pezera wait for the verdict of the judges. And this was one of their two dance spins in a foxtrot position when the, the man and the lady are facing in the same direction, you're allowed to change hold and go into one more dance spin. Here was one of their lifts. Very low line for Gwendolyn that takes so much strength. You have to be just in the right position. An incredible balance line there. And as it gets better, they'll be able to sustain that longer to make it even more interesting. First set of marks, the Canadian and U.S. judges give them the same marks as the Italians. All the rest are higher. There may have been a deduction for one of their opening lifts in the very top of the program where she was balancing on Wendell's head. They're not allowed to use anything but own support, otherwise it's a deduction. And I know that they were probably looking at that. The second set, the first perfect six we have seen in ice dance this season. 
Well, they definitely gave it all their heart and soul. They didn't hold back in their emotions. That's what they're so well noted for. Well, if the Russian world champions make it back to competition next year, it'll be quite an interesting duel because they have chosen the same music for their free dance, Carmina Barana, as Anna Cena and Pesara. On the ice now, the team that won Skate Canada. She is Russian, Margarita Drobiasko. He is Lithuanian, Povalas Vanagas. And they skate for his home country. They are in third place entering the free dance. Skating to a very beautiful piece. It's being used quite a bit by many skaters. Spent Lustil. It's a modernized version excerpt from the opera Tosca. They open with their dance spin, and then they take it right up into a lift here. Beautiful transition and segue. It's great to see people that combine these required elements. Instead of making them separate, really combine them with the choreography. It makes it more complete. are both so strong in their own right that their lifts and their spins are always so smooth because they both have great control. This is their straight line footwork. They're incorporating what we call mirror imagery. Those are twizzles, turns on one foot. Their circular footwork, incorporating a lot of difficult holds, holding onto the leg. Rotational lift, great flexibility, beautiful control, excellent. From a technical standpoint, really, this program, I would have to say, is a little bit more difficult than Margalios and Fusar Poli's. Fusar Poli and Margalio skate with, a more, with more crispness, but it, their choreography is more simple. about both teams is how they attack their theme, attack their choreography. Great balance there for Pavlis. Well, very well skated. Really, it's made Great improvements in Skate Canada. They're skating with more speed. They're skating closer together. 
Well done. One team yet to skate tonight, the American champions, Naomi Lang and Peter Chernyshev. Five teams will qualify for the Grand Prix final next month in Lyon, France. This team is expected to be one of them. To be a great ice dancer, you really have to be a great athlete to really pull it all off. You can see the strength and the flexibility and the speed of this beautiful lift. It was there a rotational lift? It has to turn a minimum of three revolutions. Another lift. This is one of their changes of edge. The first set of marks. Most of them are a tenth lower than what the Italians received, except the mark from the Italian judge, which is three tenths lower. The second set of marks. Well, guess what? The Lithuanian judge placed them ahead of the Italians, and so did the French judge. But overall, the team of Drobiasko and Vanagas adds a bronze medal to the gold it won in Canada. The Americans yet to skate, but the French are going to win the gold, and the Italians the silver. Let the celebration begin. The ice representing United States of America. Nami Lang, Peter Chernichev. The final team in the free dance here at Trophée Lalique, the American national champions Naomi Lang and Peter Chernichev. They are in fifth place entering this free dance, hoping to move up one spot and overtake the Polish team. Well, the quality in their skating is just so apparent and their control and the beautiful lines they're able to create in their free leg position. The music is Anytime Anywhere performed by Sarah Brightman. with the ice, but they float on top of the ice, which makes their quality really come through. herself with one arm and then changing direction. He keeps the momentum up by his stroking. Every time they stretch their legs out, it's in perfect unison. That takes so much time, and this couple really works very hard on that. It takes hours to perfect leg line. and Peter train at the Detroit Skating Club, which is almost the ice dance capital of the United States, with coaches Igor Spielbond and Liz Coates. This free dance was choreographed by Christopher Dean. The 
This is their circular footwork. It needs to move out a little bit. Because their holds are so difficult, sometimes that takes away from the speed. Pretty rotational lift. Peter's very secure in his footing, keeping his feet very close together on the turns, making the lift really run smoothly. Change of direction lift. in their turns. This piece is so beautiful, it's so subtle, it's hard to compare against the other teams that had music with a little more gusto. And that could make this piece not stand out as much compared to the other teams, although it's just as difficult and just as beautiful it just doesn't come out at you. They have been together three years. He is from St. Petersburg, Russia, has applied for U.S. citizenship and hopes to have it in time for the Salt Lake City Olympics. They skated the free dance very well here in one of their opening lifts. Just had a minor bobble in one of the transitions to the next position. She's in an attitude position in her left leg. Right there, they just start to lose a little bit of their connection. It's hard to see again when they're low lines. They have great edge quality. Edges are the angle that the blade makes against the ice. It's sort of a word that we use a lot without really thinking about what it means. But you can see, watch the blades and you'll see that angle. And here, he goes from low pivot to high. He's got immense control and power. Wonderful partnering skills for both of them. First set of marks. Oh, you can hear that the crowd thinks these are too low. 5.0 from the Canadian judge. High mark from the U.S. judge. 5.1 from the Polish judge. You know, I, I, I love this team. I think they're so powerful and so great. They were not given the points and the marks, rather, earlier in the competition. And I don't think that gave... It didn't give them enough confidence going into the free dance. Second set of marks. These come up, but only the U.S. and the Swiss judge placed the team as high as fourth. As is typical in ice dancing, where you finish in the compulsory dance is usually where you finish the competition. And that's exactly what happened here. The standings never changed, and the American team ends its Grand Prix season with a fifth place finish. We're doing very well, and we're very pleased with... I mean, of course, we want to get up faster, but we have to be patient and we have to let them see us a little bit more. I think we're on the right track and I feel like the further we go into the season, the better it's going to be. The reward for making the podium is not just a medal, but confidence for the rest of the season. I feel good. <laughs> da -na 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 -na. Maurizio is heading for a duel with the world bronze medalist next week here on Lifetime. Next, next week, uh, Russia, St. Petersburg. We'll see you there. Yes. What's going to happen there? Uh, Burenkratz, pay attention. Really? Pay attention. The world silver medalists are looking farther ahead to a showdown with the Russians. Yeah, we were showing that we've been working, that we are ready to uh, compete with them. Uh, if they come. Do you think they're that, scared of you or should be scared of you after a program yeah, like that? Yeah, of course, they have to be scared of us because we are competing straight against them. No, I'm not afraid now, <laughs> nobody, you know, <laughs> because I'm just from Russia, you know. The world champions are back on the ice in Delaware, where we found them right after the Trophée Lalique competition. They are nursing Angelika Krilova's bad back, which recently kept her off the ice for 10 days. But they plan to compete against Anasina and Pesera at Europeans and Worlds, and they plan to win. I'm sure we come back and we win. 
We must to do this because we're best couple in the world. Sorry. <laughs> the French will be ready for them. The Pairs competition is next. in the ISU Grand Prix of figure skating around the world in 42 days, heading for the Grand Prix final in January and the World Championships in March, both to be held here in France. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Paris, uh, in Paris you are always fine. Beautiful city. On the ice, practicing their free program to the music from Phantom of the Opera, the American Pairs team of Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman. They are not national champions, but they are the best team in the United States right now. The question is how good they are versus the rest of the world. The pressure will come during tonight's free skate. There is a different kind of pressure on the young American team of Tiffany Scott and Philip Dulabon. They are not yet expected to compete for medals. They are here because their teammates, their training partners, Laura Handy and Paul Binibos, could not be. On September 29th, right here at one of the ice rinks on the campus of the University of Delaware, Laura Handy and Paul Binibos showed up for a routine morning practice. Just like they did every day, they took the ice to work on their short program. But this time, less than 20 minutes into the workout, Paul would be fighting for his life. It was a practice like this one, a daily run through, just another lift. We went up for a star lift and it felt a little weird. So um, I thought maybe he was going to put it down, but it just it happened like that. All of a sudden, I noticed in his back, it just lurched a little bit, caved in a little bit, at which point he was on the side of his skate and down so quickly, I couldn't believe it. And he hit his, his backside, his back, and his head, all in that order. And uh, a lot of noise at that point, and Laura, of course, screamed because we could see he was in trouble. He started convulsing, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> Until that moment, they were the third-ranked pair in the United States, training for a new season. But the impact of the accident fractured Paul's skull. For the next five weeks, he was in a drug-induced coma, at times near death, because of that one split second on the ice. He stopped breathing that evening when they operated on him. And his mother, fortunately, caught the machine that would, you know, regulate the breathing and uh, told them. And they operated on it that evening and removed a part of his skull so that, you know, the uh, brain could expand a little bit so it could start a healing process. So uh, it was as close as I could ever imagine to having a fatality on the ice in pair skating. At Skate Canada last month, Christy Sargent and Chris Wirtz almost lost this lift. You could see his relief. 
In the 1993 U.S. Nationals, Tristan Vega and Richard Alexander fell hard. Fortunately, she did not hit her head. The couple got up and finished the program. In the 1994 professional competition, Isabel Brasseur and Lloyd Eisler took this fall, got up and skated the rest of their program. I'm on the ice on my, basically on my back and on my side, seeing Isabel coming down head first. Um, and so I got my hand underneath her chin and held her head up, um, saving her from hitting her face, obviously, but um, not, not breaking her fall in any way. I could feel like if something's wrong because I don't know he was just I didn't feel him the same under and then when I felt that his hand was gone from my hip I'm like okay this is gonna be a long fall we know what we're doing we're controlled in what doing we're doing but there's always a danger there's always a risk first we start and we stretch at the same time to get our timing in sync and then I'm going to initiate the timing in the lift by tapping and then I'm going to jump over his head like a cartwheel, not straight up, but over him. Mm -hmm. And then I follow through by just lifting her to the top. So I actually follow her timing. When she gets to a certain point, I add to it. To get Before you take it on the ice, you do this over From and here, over. I like to keep my arm right next to my ear. I don't want my arm to get outside because that's dangerous. Then, it, then I won't have the girl turning with me in the lift. I want to keep her right with me as I turn. I switch hips on the dismount. Here we go. Stretch. <laughs> Voila. <laughs> but lack of training had nothing to do with what happened to Paul Binibos. In practice, a chronically sore back gave out at precisely the wrong time. His coach says that only one thing could have prevented this disaster. I would like to see skaters wear helmets, some type of a helmet, thin material that's strong, that's not going to throw them off balance, and have both the girls and the boys wear the helmets. It's questionable to say whether Paul, how serious his injury would have been had he had a helmet on. It could have been anything from a, just a good old headache to maybe a, a light brain concussion. Nothing as serious as this. 22-year-old Paul Binibos came home two weeks ago. He's lost 40 pounds, has some facial paralysis, and is undergoing intensive physical therapy. But he's expected to make a full recovery, and a week ago Tuesday visited his ice rink. Laura Handy was not hurt in the accident and recently began skating again. She and Paul are a couple off the ice, and yes, they plan to continue to be one on the ice. I enjoyed it, actually. It was fun to get out there. I mean, I missed having Paul out there with me, but um, I think he'll be out there again. He's stubborn, and he's a fighter from the word go. He's a real competitor. And, uh, and I know he's going to be uh, very difficult to deal with when he comes back, because he, he's going to want it done yesterday. And that's what he's all about. That's the kind of a kid he is. So if there's anybody that can make a comeback, it's him. One week after the accident, Tiffany Scott and Philip Dulabon found out they would take the place of Laura and Paul this Grand Prix season. They finished sixth at Skate America and are competing against another tough field here. You know, when you're out there and you're really nervous and, you, you know, you're worried about the competition, uh, you have to stop and realize, well, you know, Paul's not even here. You know, he should be here, not me. And, you know, I should just be happy to be here and enjoy what I'm doing. They skated a clean, short program here at Trophée La Ligue, which they told us was the first time they'd done that this season. Now they come into the free skate in sixth place, skating to the music of Rachmaninoff.
She is 22. He just turned 26. And they've been together just over two years. One small note, they skate left-handed, so to speak. Unlike most pairs and single skaters, their jumps and spins go in a clockwise direction. They finished fifth at U.S. Nationals last February. Coming up is a star lift, though you can see this one is done with two hands. Their marks were in the 5.0 range, and they again finished sixth in this season of their Grand Prix debut. The level of the skaters that we're competing against, is, it's really, for us, it's a, it's a big honor to be out there with them, and that's the most important thing for us, to be skating on the same ice as, you know, all those world medalists and all those world-ranked skaters, and that's what we've always hoped and dreamed of doing, and now that we're actually here and doing it, it's very amazing, it's very ex exciting for us. Not intimidating? No, it, I'm still like, wow, when I watch them, but, you know, I'm out there, too. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, they're probably, you know, it's pretty cool. They might be, like, going, wow, watching us. You know? <laughs> Their American teammates, Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman, will be looking for a gold medal when the top four teams take the ice in the pair's free skate next. The yellow ribbon pin says Paul and Laura and is worn by a number of American skaters for Paul Binibos. That's Michael Weiss. The men's and ladies' competitions are on ABC Sunday at 2. Here tonight, we'll bring you the Pairs Championship at Trophée Lalique. The final group is on the ice, warming up. That is the French national champion, Sarah Abitbol. She and her partner, Stéphane Bernadis, are in first place after the short program. Coach Tamara Moscovina keeps a close eye on her pair, Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman. They are in second place and need to hold that spot to guarantee a position in next month's Grand Prix Final but they could use a gold medal to move into the front rank of international pairs, and it's a medal which is within their reach. Do your own thing, don't watch her. 
For the past 16 months, they have been training to get to the top with a demanding Russian coach. Tamara Moskvina has produced three Olympic gold medal pairs teams. It's a new coach and a new partner for Kyoko, who was national champion with Jason Dungeon. How do you do it and how do you pick somebody? Oh, well, sort of like the lotto. Either you have the right numbers or you don't. But emotionally, it was very easy. I knew what I wanted. Fortunately, there was a great partner available and, and we clicked, so that worked for the best. And you said you knew what you wanted. What was it that you saw that you wanted that you knew? Um, I knew I wanted to compete some more and the level that I was at, I thought I was stuck in my career and I knew skating with John, it would bring us to new heights. The pair has not yet gelled. Kyoko is the superior technical skater, John the better performer. She's more realistic, he's more artistic. She's more planning person, he's more feeling person. They were fifth at Skate America, moved up to second at Skate Canada, and stands second after a clean short program here. Skating is so, such a pretty uh, sport with music, with audience, with costume, but they should, should be a little bit tougher, tougher. The competition here includes the French champions, a young pair from Russia, and the world bronze medalists. Here are Terry Gannon and Olympic medalist Peter Crothers. It is extremely difficult to beat anyone on their home ice, no matter what sport you're talking about. But Peter, here in the pairs competition, that's what the Americans are trying to do. Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman in second place, right behind the French, Sarah Abby Bowl and Stefan Bernadies. It should be a great showdown to watch because the two are neck and neck overall in the Grand Prix standings, too. Well, the French team of Abby Ball and Bernadies are on their home ice, so there's an advantage there. But they also have the fact that they've been together since 1992, so the experience that's necessary for the important throws and lifts all in place for this French team. The Americans, Ina and Zimmerman, lately, they picked up a silver medal at Skate Canada. They've only been together since July of 98. However, the confidence is coming through in the short program. John Zimmerman looked very solid with his jumps. So if Ina and Zimmerman stand up in this free program and skate well, they can challenge the French in this free program. Sarah Abitbal, Stefan Benedis. They are the favorites to win gold here in their hometown. The French team of Sarah Abitbal and Stefan Bernadis in first place after the short program. And we understand that they may be attempting the throw triple axle. If you watch the Olympics in Nagano, Japan, they attempted it there. It was not done. However, she flipped off the edge. It was close. Will it happen here? It's hard to say. Well, no. It is the fourth element if they do it. And if they do it, it would be the first time it has ever been done. is if they hit these side-by-side -side triple toe loops and those are going well, a better chance that we'll see it. So that was a pretty good start there. Continuing to warm up the jumps. Double axles, looking really solid.
if they're going to go for it, it's going to be right here. No, just a double, playing it safe, and that's okay. Remember, this is a good battle going on between Abit Bowl and Bernadies and the Americans, Ina and Zimmerman, who are in second place after the short, right behind them. Both tied in the overall Grand Prix standings. triple loop you can just see the height she gets but she didn't stop the rotation you have a nice continuous edge on the landing there unique positions the lift notice how they just change directions at the end there difficult position. Usually you see just one foot and they'll wrap it up with their combination spin. Wow, how much fun must that be? Here at home in front of your family, in front of your friends, they both live with their parents here in Paris. To have a free skate like that. Sarah Abby Bowen and Stefan Bernadies. We were looking for the throw triple axel at the beginning of the program. Only a double, but I want to emphasize doing a good throw double axel is difficult. But they've pushed it one step further, and now they're thinking about putting the triple in for sure at Europeans and the World Championships. However, not here. This is hard because Notice, he's gonna just, what we call, deadlift her. She does not assist him in any way. He has to press her dead weight. Very hard to do. Great control and strength. And that flip dismount showing variation. Nice. Oh, these aren't very high marks. This crowd is not going to like it at all. The first set for technical merit, 5.5 up to 5.8. Well, they, they're maybe not the greatest marks, but these are strong marks for them, considering we haven't seen the second set yet. I wonder what these will do. Presentation marks next. 
Yeah, so these are better. Much better. Uh -huh. 5.7 up to 5.9. Wow. That's big. Couple of 5.9s. The French judge and the Canadian five, judge. Five, Sarah nine, Abby Foll and Stefan Bernadies in eight, first five, place now. Seven, five, nine. Thank you. The second place Americans will be last to skate tonight. Can the French keep their grip on the gold? Competitors passing in the night. The work is done for the French team, defending champions here at Trophée Lalique. The free skate continues as we go back to Terry Gannon. So here are the four-time national champions of Poland. They skated at Nations Cup where they placed fourth, and that's where they are after the short program. The bronze medalist from the World Championships last season, Dorota Zagorska and Mariusz Szudek. So he's almost a foot taller than her. And where that comes into play is on the lifts. Easier for him to press her up into the air and certainly throw. Almost 100 pounds more than she is, too. jumps and pair skating when you jump by your partner you don't want to be too far apart the judges like to see you jump close together it's all about unison and two people skating as one Peter as we watch and probably have an even better look than the judges as a competitor for you and Kitty how important were the videos and to watch the tapes of your performances? Very important because you could see things like that separation when you're spinning together and jumping together. And you knew then how much closer you had to get to get that final product. so important. Oh, she folded at the waist, but through repetition, you know how to correct mistakes on the end of a throw like that, and got through it.
in. Watch the change in position, making it more difficult. Right now, your legs are on fire. Four minutes and 15 seconds into the program, then the last lift. Well, we saw them at Nations Cup where they finished fourth. That was just a week ago in Germany. This is a much better free skate for them. But remember, if you're out of the top three going into this portion of the competition, you don't control your own destiny. You can't necessarily win overall. But we'll wait and see what the judges thought. Dorota Zagorska and Mariusz Shudek, the reigning world bronze medalist. Variation on this lift. She'll actually flip up, and then he has to stop that flipping motion and begin the rotation of the lift. Hard to do, very unique position. So the judges certainly will respect the difficulty of that due to the nature of that lift. And then the throw triple sow cow, you can see, the look on her face, I'm about to get launched, and boy, does she have her <laughs> really flying across the ice. Folds, but look at that leg hold up, and a nice landing could have gone down without the experience that they have together. So the French on top, ahead of the Canadian Sergeant in Words. We'll see where Zagorski and Shudek fit in. The first set, 5.4 up to 5.7. Those are pretty decent marks for the first set of marks. See if the presentation go up. Actually, just about the same as Emmy Bowen and Bernadette. Now presentation marks 5.4 to 5.7, so that's good enough to put them in second place. The team from Poland right behind Emmy Bowen and Bernadette from France. Two pairs to go. The wait continues for the French. And for Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman, who do control their own destiny and will be last to skate tonight. Next Friday night, we will be in St. Petersburg for the Cup of Russia, where a duel in the dance is expected between the team of Shaylin Bourne and Victor Kratz and the Italian team of Barbara Fusarpoli and Maurizio Margaglio. The ISU Grand Prix, a figure skating odyssey, continues to wind its way around the world. We are in Paris tonight, fourth stop of a tour that began at the end of October in Colorado Springs. The Paris competition nearing its conclusion. The French team, the defending champions here at Trophée La Ligue, are in the lead. The Americans can win the gold medal if they win the free skate. Here's Terry Gannon. Tatiana Totmanina, Maxime Marlin. From Russia, here are Tatiana Totmianina and Maxime Marinin in third place heading into this free skate. Seventh in the world last season. They finished seventh at Skate America. on those jumps. They're strong jumpers, but they want to get those side-by-side -side jumps closer together when they're skating. And you have to stay close together on this. The split triple twist lift. Good height, a little bit of a collision on the landing. But they didn't lose any speed. First season 
competing at the international level, that after breaking into the top three at the Russian National Championships. Mentioned seventh at Worlds, they came in fifth at Europeans. Man wants to stay perfectly balanced while turning on the ice with a woman over his head because if you're not, you're going to have a fall. They have very stable lifts in that respect. Boy, really solid singles jumps. those spins were perfectly timed. Very good unison. a pretty good performance here. They really excel in their side-by-side -side jumps. They want to try to make their pair elements a little bit stronger, but they're certainly a team to look for in the future. They don't look thrilled with their performance right now. It was much better than we saw at Skate America. There's no question about that, where they finished seventh at Colorado Springs, and they said they were just not up to speed there. Tatiana Tobianina and Maxime Marinin of Russia. Side-by-side -side, triple toe loops, three rotations, very solid, and then followed up with a nice double toe loop on the end of the triple. They have no problem with the jumps. Here, the triple sow cow, she gets up into the air just fine, and then a good landing, rotation stops. Good speed coming out of that jump. So now we'll see. Remember, Abby Bolin, Bernadice in the lead over Zagorska and Shudek of Poland. Then Sargent and Wirtz. First set of marks, 5.3 up to 5.8. You know what that is, Terry? That's the fact that they did two sets of triples side by side. That Canadian judge is very impressed with their single skills. Highest mark we've seen so far for technical merit. And for presentation in the 5.4 to 5.7 range. Again, that they could make their pair elements a little bit better, but 
they certainly got their attention with those jumps. So Peter Topmianina and Marinin of Russia move into second right behind Abidbol and Bernadi. So they push Zagorski and Shudek down to third. When we come back, Yoko Ina and John Zimmerman are on the ice. The ISU Grand Prix of Figure Skating is sponsored by Amazon.com. Find gifts from toys to electronics at Earth's biggest selection. And by OnHealth.com, a new way to look at everything on health. On the ice, representing United States of America. Kyoko Ina John Zimmerman. And now the final Paris team takes the ice, and they are from America. And in second place with a chance to win here in Paris. Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman in their second season together. They made it to the Grand Prix Final last year. But this is a great opportunity for them. They finished second at Skate Canada. And being under the watchful eye of the great pair skating coach Tamara Masvina, they've really got that going for them. John can struggle on his triple jumps. Let's see if he gets through this first opening side by side. Triple, she goes down. <laughs> Unusual. We don't see that very often. Together, throw triple sow cow, leaning. But no fall. Again, John's the one who has been typically the one to struggle with the jumps, but with Kyoko falling, that side kind of sends a wrench into it. goes down oh gosh boy as excited as they were after the short program because again it's their second season together and it may have been their best performance yet at a, as a Paris team but now two falls already in the free skate well it definitely takes them out as far as winning them the spins are a little bit out of unison here Takes them out of the gold for sure, but we really don't want to make any more mistakes. Came in second last year at this event, right behind Abbott Bowen and Bernadise, who are the current leaders. Perhaps the best they could hope for is the same. John just singled a, what was supposed to be a double toe loop. Losing the momentum a little bit. Here is a good throw triple loop. Nice. Back on track.
still pretty good at the end of this program. Overhead one hand. A flip off of that death spiral, that was by design, but it still looks sloppy. In other words, you can't tell if it's a mistake or it was supposed to be in the program. Peter, we saw it at Skate Canada, and everyone kind of lost their breath yeah. for a moment, too. You wonder if the judges, if it's lost on them. A little bit. Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman, not the free skate that they had hoped for. In second place heading into that, we'll see if they can remain on the podium. Side-by-side -side triple toe loops. Check this out. Usually John struggles, but who goes down here? It's Kyoko. She doesn't get the left leg back to stop the rotation to land that jump. And then the side-by-side -side double axles. That's the first part of this jump combination. Two and a half turns in the air, and John just goes down there. He was surprised to see his partner fall no. in the beginning of the program. No. All right, so let's see now if the Americans can stay in the top three and on the podium here. Remember how important that is in terms of the overall Grand Prix picture, too. Technical merit marks, eh, 5.0 to 5.4. Terry, they just had too many mistakes going against them. The judges couldn't ignore it. And now for presentation, need these to be very high. 5.1. Up to 5.5, Peter. Not a good program for them. Disappointing. So you can tell by the, the looks on their faces. Ina and Zimmerman out of the top three. They end up in fourth behind Zagorska and Shudek. Thank you. Thank you, Terry and Peter. The final standings in the pairs here at Trophée Lalique. The French defend their title. Tatiana Tatmianina and Maxine Marinen score their highest international finish. Narota Zagorska and Maru Shudek move up to third place. While fourth place for Ina and Zimmerman makes it doubtful that they will qualify for the Grand Prix final back here in France next month. Well, we have a long time in January to do absolutely nothing. The French take the gold medal, the Americans go home empty-handed. We have beaten the world champion uh, in two weeks ago in Skate America, so we're not afraid of anybody. What happened? Uh, uh, our stone, that is Kyoka, somehow fell down. That was like the disaster, because she never fells. John decided to follow her example, and he fall, fell. For Susie Wynn, Terry Gannon, and Peter Carruthers, I'm Andrea Joyce. Good night from Paris, where the French team of Abitbol and Bernadise has won the gold medal.